Speaking of needles, these are extra special curved needles. They're not straight at all. And when you're doing this Coptic binding or a link stitch binding, they save you. It would be a huge headache and not any fun at all if you had straight needles. Definitely takes a good 20 books <laughs> of practice before this makes sense. You know, um, if you're going to be a craftsperson and make your living, you have to figure out how to do things quickly. And um, so I can sew a book really quickly now. It took a long time to get there. And I didn't used to be able to talk at the same time either. Well, I keep thinking about like needles and the use of needles. And one of my first memories is, of course, my mother. Um, and she is a knitter and a spinner. And that's how she made her living. You know, my dad was involved as well. But And the sound of the knitting needles going tick, 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 at the movies, at basketball games, um, everywhere, everywhere. And I thought just that sound was what knitting was. And there are pictures of me very young holding this big sweater that my mom was working on going tick, 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 tick. <laughs> um, and then from there, going into sewing, a lot of sewing, um, just a whole lot of knitting, you know, with my mother. And then this was sewing too. It was just sewing paper. That's all that it was. It was a very natural and easy progression. I like to be as simple as possible with my tools. I love blacksmithing and um, ceramics, but I don't want to have a kiln. I don't want to have these big things to carry around. I wish I could have a grand piano, but it's such a huge accessory. It doesn't fit with how I feel about life. And so one reason I really like bookbinding is that they're all hand tools. These are old, old tools. A book, you know, bone folder people have used for such a long time. Um, and they, bookbinders use them, you know, still today. And it's simple and you can use that simplicity to, to make very complicated things. Traditional bookbinders are really amazing when it comes to that. When I do painting and drawing and people ask why <laughs> or what inspires me, a lot of times for many artists the answer has to do with their connection to nature, you know, or um, coming from a pretty emotional place. Sometimes it's a hard question to answer because it sounds a lot like what anyone would say. And with bookbinding, I feel it's a little bit different for me. It is definitely art and it's craft put together. It's also easier for me to walk into the studio and make a bunch of books. I don't have as many emotional blocks preventing me from expressing my art. If I want to do painting or drawing, I'm just like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And it takes me a week to think about it and then I finally have the time. I think it's also very important to be very comfortable where you work and for it to feel really good. And if you notice yourself knocking into the corner of the same table over and over, you should just go ahead and move it. <laughs> you know, if you can't see, go ahead and get a light. It's actually amazing to me, even just for myself, that I will often keep working with what's there instead of changing it and making it how I want it. And it happens for a lot of people, whether it's their work situation or their back starts hurting and they can't figure out why. You need good shoes, you need quality, you know. Um, and I do feel very happy in this studio space. This is one I made playing with using fabrics and Davy board to create a hardcover, the front soft. And um, also the theme was Whisper. Let's see here. There's the top. Oh, okay. Path of a Whisper. Um, and then being more sculptural with a small book, you don't feel as confined by the rules. And so this book is bound simply by its pages.
many artists have been creating for their whole lives, and I was one of them. You know, always making things, making things, making things, even hair scrunchies, you know. Um, Ukrainian egg decorating. I did blacksmithing when I was 11. You know, anything at all. And so, you know, artists are curious people and always looking around them. And I loved that I had created these collections of um, dragonfly wings or pressed leaves and flowers or scraps of fabric or old books of old, co you know, old covers from old books um, and that kind of thing. I didn't know what I was going to do with it because how do you incorporate that, incorporate that into a painting or a drawing? you know, depending on what media you're working with. But, um, and so with books, it really was the first time I felt that I could sit in my studio and look at all of my many collections over years and use them all, you know, like take corks and tea bags and, you know, fabrics and create things that were, that felt fun and they were durable. And I tend to go for the older feeling or the natural, you know, aesthetic. It's always balancing being practical. Have to pay attention to the money, you know, and you have to pay attention to whether people even want what you make at all. <laughs> um, and can you sell it? And are you organized? And do you answer your phone calls? And then you also have to look at yourself and see, really pay attention to whether you actually do make art and you're making your art and you're very active in that. Um, and it's great because it means every day can be different. So I have monthly sewing circles here at my house in the studio, um, and people gather around. They bring work that they are um, that's in progress, or they're procrastinating and not finishing it, and need special time set aside. And we have tea and talk, and men and women of all ages come, and it's really fun. So that was an idea that I had, so that people wouldn't have to keep paying a big chunk of money for classes, but would still have support for in the process. You know, because some people. You know, when you discover something and you know you want to keep doing it, you need help. But they're addicted and they're at home trying to figure it out, figure it out. You know, you need somebody to ask the question to. So students actually come here and meet me at the studio often and say, I sewed the book up to this point and I don't remember how to put the back cover on, you know, or they'll buy a bunch of paper from me or whatever. And it's really great. And I like teaching a lot.